This is Cyberpunk 2077 version 2.12 H1 running at 50 FPS on Intel HD graphics. No, it is not fake at all. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I made Cyberpunk run that well on the 8 year old integrated graphics and how I made the game look worse than GTA San Andreas in the process. <laughs> So let's begin! The PC that I'll be using for this video is my legionary social credits laptop. As you may have understood already, I'll be testing the Intel HD Graphics 630, which are the integrated graphics of the laptop's HQ CPU. But before you stop watching and leave a comment saying, oh this motherfucker is using a good PC with a GTX 1050, here's some proof that I won't be using the dedicated GPU. I made Cyberpunk run using the Intel HD graphics from Windows so-called graphics settings. So I won't be using the GTX 1050, ok? I initially used the lowest settings that Cyberpunk allows by default, HDD mode is turned on because the game is installed on my hard drive and I'm using the lowest resolution allowed which is 1LG4 by 768 in combination with FSR set to ultra performance. And well, not only did I fail to start a fire, but in fact, the game runs surprisingly well at around 20 FPS, which is already really impressive considering that we're working with old integrated graphics from a few years before Cyberpunk even came out. Sure, the game's graphics look like poop on the lowest settings, but we're gonna make them even better, so keep watching. In order to downgrade the game's graphics even further, we're gonna be using this mod which allows us to disable some graphics options which you cannot disable by default. I will share the download link for it in the video description. In order to use the mod, we also need to install the Cyber Engine Twix mod. To install the Cyber Engine Twix mod, all you need to do is navigate to your games folder, then just extract the folder from the mod into your games folder and that's it. The same thing goes for the More Graphics Options mod. After installing the true mods, when you start the game, you will get a first time setup message. Click on the Unbound button and press a key of your choice to buy the key for the mods console menu to access and close it. After the game has fully loaded, you should be able to access the More Graphics Options mods menu with the key that you bind it, where we've got quite a lot of stuff we can disable. In the Post Processing tab, you can disable the bloom, distortion and stone mapping, which seems to make the game look way more bright. You can also disable the anti-aliasing, however do keep in mind that doing so disables any kind of upscaling, so unless you won't be using upscaling, do not disable this option. Moving on to the shadows tab, you can disable the distant and cascade shadows, which gets rid of all shadows entirely. Disabling the global and distant global illumination and all the options in the fog tab on the other hand seems to make certain buildings look way darker which is especially noticeable during certain daytimes and weather and can make some areas of the game have rather weird and sometimes even headache inducing lighting which is something to keep in mind. Disabling all the options in the screen space tab gets rid of many of the game's reflections. You will also find some more things you can disable in the miscellaneous tab including the character's hair because who needs hair anyway and the crowd which turns Night City into a ghost town. Welcome to the cyberpunk version of Pripyat. Are those remaining guys supposed to be the liquidators or what? Since disabling the crowd can make the game a little bit more difficult to enjoy, I'll keep that option turned on. Disabling the stuff in the async compute tab can also help improve the performance on old GPUs. But then we came into a problem. For some reason, when you disable the global illumination setting, not the distant global illumination one, as you drive really fast and move into different areas, the game seems to aggressively begin demanding more and more RAM. And when you run out of RAM, it starts using more and more of your swap file. The swap file or page file is like a virtual RAM that Windows creates on your boot drive and is mostly used to compensate when you're running out of actual system RAM. This specific problem that I mentioned is better known in the gaming community as memory leak. Actually, the game seems to suffer from this memory leak problem on Intel HD graphics in general. As I noticed, the RAM and SOAP file usage go higher and higher when I'm constantly switching between save games or playing through quests. 
The problem isn't as aggressive when the global illumination is left on, but it is still there regardless. Another thing that seems to aggressively increase the RAM usage over time is using the pause menu for some strange reason. Yeah, this memory leak problem is getting cursed. If you want to play Cyberpunk 2077 on Intel HD graphics, well, avoid using the pause menu for too long. In my experience, once the swap file usage reaches 24GB, the game just gives up and crashes, sometimes giving me a weird COR error. Wow, I guess 16GB of RAM aren't enough for Cyberpunk on Intel HD graphics. CD Projekt must have definitely taken notes from Rockstar games. It honestly isn't all that big of a deal in my opinion, as it only takes around 1-2 to two minutes to restart the game and not bug into your latest autosave, but please, for the love of god, just make sure your boot drive is on SSD, otherwise the performance is gonna be absolute crap, no matter what. Speaking of autosave, did I mention that Cyberpunk 2077 has a really good autosave system? Unfortunately, I don't have a solution for the memory leak, but you can use the memory reduct app to stabilize the game just a little bit. Link for the app in the video description by the way. Here are my settings for memory reduct, feel free to copy them. and press the clean memory button every time before watching the game. <sighs> now that we've settled the memory leak saga, let's move on. Let's also take a look at this low end series LOD 0.5 mod, link in the description of course. To install it, do the same thing that we did for the previous two mods. Now, this mod hasn't been updated since 2022, so in the latest game version, it only seems to work with certain cars but because it still partially works, we'll use it anyway. And guys, if you want to revert the changes from the mods, all you need to do is re-enable all the options in the more graphics options mods menu, then close the game and go back to the games folder, there go to archive, pc and delete the mod folder, then go back and go to bin x64 and delete the plugins folder, the global.ini, license and version.dll files. Anyway, using all the tricks, the game now looks almost unrecognizable. In fact, this looks like a Cyberpunk 2077 map mod for GTA Vice City, but hey, the performance is now even better than before. We're now getting around 25 to 30 FPS and getting even more in less demanding areas. But I have one final trick up my sleeve. Let's set the game to windowed borderless mode, then we're going to open that magic 8-bit duck software. Guys, I'm asking for a moment of silence as we're going to see the final result. Oh my god. No way. It's getting 50 FPS now. This has to be one of the most impressive things I've ever seen. Like, this isn't some old game, this is Cyberpunk on Intel HD graphics, and it's getting way more FPS than on the consoles, what the hell? Now, there is quite a bit of input latency, as this is being drastically upscaled using frame generation, but this is still beyond anything that I've ever imagined. We got Cyberpunk 2077 running at 60 FPS on Intel HD graphics before GTA 6, now all that's left is to test GTA 6 on Intel HD graphics. Oh, I don't know what else to say. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you can also check out the featured video where I made GTA 5 playable on some of the weakest hardware. Feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel as we're slowly but surely reaching 1000 subscribers. And I wish you all the best.